In this video, we're going to show you how to set up and connect the Elgato Wave XLR audio interface with the Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser microphone. This is one of the most affordable and most popular microphones in the world, and the Elgato Wave XLR just came out this year, and it is really, really appealing due to its budget, the features that it has inside it, which we're going to walk through, and its form factor in terms of being compact and being able to sit on your desk. So if you are just wanting to hear how all this combination sounds, this video will show you everything involved. And if you have a heap of equipment in front of you and you need to know how to plug it all in and set it up correctly, we're going to walk through all that as well. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, the microphone, the stand, the cable, any of the things that we talk about, or if you're looking for other things that aren't featured in this video. For example, we're using a short microphone stand here because it is more convenient when we're hooking everything up. But if you're looking for a recommendation on a boom arm or anything like that, we have some helpful links down in the description below with current up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers. Now, the first thing that we have to do with the Audio-Technica AT2020, there are a couple tricks here to get the best sound out of this microphone before we even connect it to anything to our computer. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to have perfect mic positioning. What we're going to do is we're going to bring it up. We're going to try to get it within about a fist of our mouth here. That will give us the best pickup. If you notice, there are two sides to this microphone. There's a side here that has a logo on it and the back side says back. You want to make sure that the logo is facing your mouth. Another common mistake that we see with this microphone all the time is people think it's an end address microphone. They'll try speaking into the top of it like this. But the Audio-Technica AT2020 is a side address microphone. So you want to speak into the side and you should be speaking into the side that has the logo on it. So we're going to orient that towards us. Next, we do have another video with five common mistakes that people make with this microphone, but one of the big ones is I would always invest with a pop filter or a foam windscreen or something like that for this microphone. It is really sensitive to plosives, that popping sound if you breathe into the microphone. You can get these generic uh, foam windscreens on Amazon. We do have some links down in the description below as well, but it's definitely well worth the money if you're using this to record your voice, if you're speaking into this microphone. We do also recommend that you use some type of shock mount. We're not going to cover that in this video, but I will leave a link down in the description below that will prevent things like tapping getting through all the way to the microphone. Now, if you are recording an instrument or something like that with this microphone, you don't necessarily need the foam windscreen on it. I just like that if I am recording my voice with this specific microphone. So now that we got all that set up, we're about a fist away from the microphone. We have the foam windscreen on, it's oriented correctly. Now we can get into connecting this microphone to the Elgato Wave XLR. On the bottom of this microphone here, you can see that it is an XLR output. And on the back of the Elgato Wave XLR, the reason that you'd buy this device is to connect an XLR microphone to your computer. So we have an XLR input on the back of that device. So we're going to use a standard XLR cable here. It'll be XLR male to female. If you are looking for recommendations on an XLR cable, we have some links down in the description below. We're going to connect this to the bottom of the microphone. Make sure you hear that click there. We're going to put the microphone back so it's oriented correctly. And on the back of the Elgato Wave XLR, we're going to connect our XLR cable. Now that we have the Audio-Technica AT2020 connected to our audio interface, there's a couple little things that we need to go through in order to make sure that this microphone is working perfectly for us. On the top of the device here, you can kind of see it. There's a mute button. It's very, it's, there's no clicky button. There's no anything like that. You just touch it. So the microphone could be muted here without you realizing it. So do make sure if those lights are red, then the microphone is muted. So unmute that there. I'm going to turn everything down. The next thing that you need to know is that this is a condenser microphone. All condenser microphones require 48 volts of phantom power in order to activate them. They won't sound bad without it. They will literally not work. The technology inside this microphone requires external power. So we need to send it power from the audio interface. If we look down here in the bottom corner, we can see 48 volts and the light is turned off. 
We're gonna long press on the big button here and you'll see that we turned on 48 volts of phantom power. That will activate this microphone and allow it to start working for us. The next thing that we need to do is we need to turn up the gain in order to get more level out of this microphone. So we're gonna double check that we're within about a fist of this microphone. We're gonna single press on this big wheel until the microphone button here is lit up and then we're gonna increase the gain. As I look over at my computer here, you can see that we are peaking at minus five. I'm just gonna reset that. You can see that right now we are peaking at minus 18 or so, so that's about right. I'm gonna turn up just a little bit more. When I set this, I want it to be somewhere between minus 12 and minus 18 when it comes through my computer. Now you can monitor this level using all types of different software. Most commonly and free is OBS. You can download that online. I'll put a link down in the description below. In this video, I'm using Logic Pro uh, because that's what I use to record uh, on my Mac here. But you do wanna make sure that you're between that minus 12 and minus 18 dB on the input gain of your microphone. On, for me and my voice with this mic positioning, that means that I'm turned up to about a third of the way on this knob here, about 30% of the gain from this preamp. Now, why do we want to be between minus 12 and minus 18? That gives you about 12 dB of headroom. So if you do get animated, if you laugh during your recording or live stream or something like that, if you're a singer that has very dynamic vocals, you wanna make sure that you can exceed that without clipping. What happens when you clip? Let's turn this up so you can hear what happens when you clip the microphone by turning up the gain too much. So I'm gonna keep turning up the gain here until you can see on the meter here that we're at zero and you can hear it's clipped, it's distorted, it's really gross. And the really bad thing about doing that is that you can never recover that audio. Once you record a clipped signal, you can never get it back. So do keep in mind that you want to avoid that if at all possible. Not only does it sound horrible, it will ruin your recording and ruin your take. So you'd have to redo whatever you did if you send a clip signal. That's why I recommend being between minus 12 and minus 18 dB, just to give you that headroom before you start working or processing that sound on your computer. There are lots of videos out there on how to work the Elgato software if you're setting up a live streaming mix or something like that, but this video just covered everything that you need to know in order to get your microphone working correctly. You need good mic positioning, you need good mic placement, you need to speak into the side of the microphone, you need a foam windscreen if you're using your voice, I think. It always sounds better with a little foam windscreen on it. You need to set the input gain correctly. So in our case, about 30% with my voice. And then you obviously do need to make sure that you have 48 volts of phantom power turned on as well to power and activate this microphone. If you have any questions that we did not cover in this video, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs on anything that you've seen here, we have a bunch of links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.